Hello and welcome to my new video. This time again narrated by my AI voice of choice, Charlotte. I've been following the debate around image generating AIs and copyright, or image rights, since I started using stable diffusion last year. As an author and photographer who benefits from copyright myself, I can certainly understand people's objections. For this reason, I only use my own pictures, which I either took myself with my camera or created myself in some other way. And in the prompts for stable diffusion, I never use artist names to add their style to my images. In general, I prefer a more realistic style, both in my writing and in the images I create with the AI. Nevertheless, the problem itself has not let me go. That's why I'm going to show you my approach to using art in stable diffusion without copying the artists, or rather their images. Not only the SDXL models help, but also the IP adapters, and more recently, the SDXL Lightning LoRa model. The video is divided into three parts. The first part is about creating the images that we will need in the second part to generate IP adapter embeds. You can see how this works in detail in my last video. In the third part, we will use the embeds to create artistic images ourselves. You can already see a few of my results here. Part 1. As we all know, all art movements have their own characteristics. For example, and the video will be about this art movement, these terms are attributed to surrealism, the unreal and the supernatural, dreams and visions, wishes, desires and suffering, and my favourite, states of intoxication, and general knowledge, which is a public good, and may be used by everyone, also includes the fact that surrealism is divided into two different schools. Absolute surrealism, or abstract surrealism, and paranoiac critical surrealism. The surrealists developed their own painting techniques and also their own approaches to the painting process itself. There are five techniques in total. Frottage, grattage, collage, décalcomanie, and drip painting. And the two approaches are called automatism and hyperrealism. But of course I don't want to give an art seminar here even if that might be of interest to some people. The important thing here is that Stable Diffusion and the SDXL base model can process these. It has been shown that the basic model benefits from the fact that it has had such broad training, so it is very based, as the saying goes. We can take these and finally use the SDXL text encode clip G and clip L accordingly. As far as I know, G and L stand for group and list. These list terms can therefore be used in clip L. As you can see here, the Lightning LoRa only runs if you set the CFG value to 8 in the sampler. At least for this version, there is also a 1-step, 2-step and a 4-step version. But 8 simply delivers better quality and you have to set the scheduler to SGM uniform. In my test, the DIM sampler proved to be the best. However, the speed upgrade for the SDXL models via SDXL Lightning LoRa proves to be less helpful at this point in the workflow, as you can see here in a direct comparison. But in the third part of the video at the latest, it becomes clear how drastically this can speed up the entire generation process. It takes a while until we have all the necessary images together. We need a few sample images for each technique to create the embeds in the second part. It is interesting to note that basically only the SDXL base model adequately represents the respective painting techniques. The other models are less broadly educated but sometimes deliver pretty cool interpretations. There are of course other painting techniques that you can combine with the surrealistic ones. It's not so rare for interesting results to emerge, and it's also exciting to try out the control after generate functions in the sampler. 
I don't normally use much more than randomize and fixed, but sometimes it's worth running increment and decrement a few times. Part 2. Creating Embeds After selecting the images created in the first part, you can now process them into embeds using the IP adapter. I have done the work of creating these for the plus model and the normal model in order to compare them afterwards. You can watch the whole process in the uncut version of this video if you like. In any case, there were a few surprises. The Lightning LoRa simply works brilliantly here. Instead of the required 50, 55 steps for the CFG value in the sampler, 8 is now sufficient. In any case, you should also be careful here to set the first value in the ENCODE IP adapter image node to true if you want to use an IP adapter plus model. And of course, set it to false if you are not using it. With so many embeds, I still made the mistake a few times. Part 3. Creating Artistic Images This is the really fun part. With the Lightning LoRa, you can cobble together the embeds insanely quickly and in high resolution and create cool images as you can see. The embeds from the normal IP adapter model manage to easily transfer their stylistic content to any image that is sent to the sampler via ControlNet.
During my tests, I found that the IP Adapter Plus embeds are excellent at painting the blank pages in the image mask, but more complicated to use with the control net. In any case, with both models you can determine the foreground and background of the image via the start at and end at values in the Apply IP Adapter from Encoded Node, as you can see here. All in all, there was a lot to smile about with all the things the AI wanted to read out of my surrealistic prompt entries. In any case, it is possible to have your pictures generated in a selected art style without copying an artist and their pictures. This is even better for my own projects, as they already have a certain way of their own anyway, and I would find it a shame if someone looked at my work and could only recognise a copy. In any case, I hope you enjoy trying it out. Thanks for watching the video. If it was interesting and or helpful for you, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe. Last but not least, have a nice day.